What's that? You've got some pain in your rib and you want me to take a look? Well, uh, let's see. Oh, well, I know what it is. Ugh. Feel better? Well, glad to help. Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, the disaster doctor of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 600 articles on medical preparedness for any disaster. I'm also the co-author with my lovely wife, Amy, of the Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, as well as the New York Times bestseller, The Ebola Survival Handbook, both on Amazon. This is America's favorite loudmouth, T.D. Bird, and this guy shouldn't play with knives. Given the media outcry against gun ownership, it's e easy to forget the wounds that are caused by knives and other sharp instruments. Trauma incurred from these injuries could be minor, could be major. Penetrating trauma, such as caused by a stab wound, should not be discounted as a major injury. It can be life-threatening depending on the organs and blood vessels damaged. Penetrating injury is divided into perforating and non-perforating. A perforating wound is one in which the object causing the damage goes into one side of the body and exits through the other side. A round from a 223 or uh, NATO uh, round would commonly be an example of this type of penetrating trauma. Luckily, low-speed projectiles, such as knives, are non-perforating. They rarely go through the body or cause a shock wave like bullets. Your concerns are related specifically to the area of entry and the structures located directly in the path of the offending instrument. Stab wounds are an example of a non-perforating wound. The projectile causing the damage enters it, stays there, or exits where it entered. Some sharp instruments might do this, say a crossbow bolt or a spearhead, but let's assume you'll be unlikely to see these. Most knife wounds you'll see will be minor lacerations. Blood loss and damaged organs will be the major issue to deal with. A little bit about blood. Blood carries oxygen to the tissues and organs and it removes waste products. It's made up of several components including red blood cells. These cells carry oxygen to body, body tissues. White blood cells, these cells work to, among other things, fight infection and disease. Platelets and other clotting factors, these allow blood to coagulate and lessen blood loss in general. And plasma, the yellowish liquid in which all of these are suspended. Your immediate action upon encountering a victim of a wound with a sharp instrument may save their life. Bleeding from arteries and internal organs can be very brisk. Now, if you're a typical 180 pound or 70 kilogram adult, you have approximately 9 to 10 pints, about 5 liters of blood in your body. Athletes and those living at very high altitudes may actually have more. You can't afford to lose more than about 40% of your total blood volume without needing major resuscitative efforts. To get an idea of how much blood this is, empty a 2 liter bottle of fruit punch or cranberry juice on the floor. You will be surprised at how much fluid that represents. Hemorrhage is classified by the American College of Surgeons as follows. Class 1, hemorrhage is less than or equal to 15% of body volume. That's 1.5 pints or 3 quarters of a liter in an average adult male. A person donating one pint of blood is therefore giving slightly less than 0.5 liters, for example. At this level, there are almost no signs or symptoms, although some feel indeed faint. Class 2 hemorrhage is 15 to 30 percent of total blood volume, 2 to 3 pints or 1 to 1 and a half liters. Now the body starts trying to compensate at this point with among other things a faster heartbeat to speed oxygen to tissues. This patient will appear pale and skin will be cool. They'll feel weak. Now a class 3 hemorrhage that's 30 to 40 percent of your total blood volume. Three to four pints, 1.5 to two liters. At this point, the heart's going to be beating very quickly and straining to get enough oxygen to the tissues, and your blood pressure is low. Smaller blood vessels and extremities are constricting to keep the body core circulation going. This patient's going to be confused, pale, and in hypovolemic, low blood volume, shock. Blood transfusion is usually necessary in these kinds of cases. A class 4 hemorrhage is more than 40% of your total blood volume. That's greater than 4 pints or 2 liters. The heart can no longer maintain blood pressure and circulation, and without major resuscitative help at this point, organs will fail and the patient will likely be comatose and die. In most circumstances, sharp instrument injuries will be minor. After controlling bleeding, your goal is to clean the wound thoroughly and to dress it. 
Wound closure might be an option in some wilderness cases, but most backcountry stab wounds are going to be dirty and they should be left open. Check out our open wounds video for more info on this. Now, if you're attending to an actively bleeding wound from a sharp object, you're going to need a level head and quick action. This is sometimes not as easy as it sounds. Most people are not accustomed to dealing with these issues on a daily basis and they'll experience a type of paralysis that may waste precious time. If modern medical care is available, contact emergency services if they exist. If they don't, apply pressure and check out my next video, Stab Wounds 2. What? Next video? That's right. The boss, and you know who that is, is telling me my videos are too long. So if you want to know what to do when you come across someone with a stab wound, just head to Stab Wounds 2. Should be up already. This is Joe Alden, MD, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, are you looking for a great Christmas or birthday gift for that older child that just might get them interested in the challenging world of survival? Well, take a quick look at our new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival. A great way to get the whole family involved in a fun way without cramming this stuff down their throats. Check it out at www.survivalboardgame.com. Thanks.